just to confirm what you have here, the slope of this, it's a it's a straight line, right? Oh yeah, that looks pretty. That looks pretty natural. <laughs> You're supposed to do that at the end. <laughs> Although now it sounds like I told you to do that. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> whoever's watching that at home, uh, um, I think some of these you either just knew or you looked up in your notes from when we've done them before. X to the fourth is actually 4X to the third. This is 5X to the fourth. If you had anything, if you had X to the 127, its derivative is 127X to the 126. If you have X to the negative 8, it's going to be negative 8X to the negative 9. Okay? If you have X... <laughs> You, you, you clap like I made this up. I, I have to say this. I didn't make this this up. <laughs> yeah, we need a laugh track now. Even if it's a fraction, x to the... Well, I was going to do five halves here. Five halves, x to the three halves, because you got to subtract one, right? What was the one you had? You had x... X to the uh, a million point two. <laughs> its derivative is we need a bit more space here. A million point two. X to the uh, need more space. Nine nine. No, I think I got one there. Nine nine doesn't give me much more space at a time here. Nine <laughs> nine point. Point two. Oh, you're thinking? No, you're thinking this. If we did x to the x to the zero point seven, what's it going to be? Yeah, exactly, right? Because you're the rule is, I mean, the pattern is whatever is uh, whatever's here becomes the coefficient, and then you drop the power by one. I would like to sh I would like to look back on one that we did. Actually, you can you can imagine one we've done before. When we did it the long way. Now, I think as somebody pointed out that you guys were going to be mad one that I was making you do all the long way for things. If you do this limit as h approaches zero of, we're finding the derivative of say x to the fifty four. If you were doing x to the 54, if we were finding the derivative, we would have to do this. x plus h to the 54 minus x to the 54 oh. over h. Multiplying out this, it is, is even if you know the binomial theorem, is a lot of work, right? If you did know what it was, it would be x to the 54 plus 54x to the 53 plus something x to the 52 plus, well, oh. H, right? Hang on, I forgot the H. H squared plus something, X to the 51. H cubed. That should be a punishment. Your punishment is multiply this out. Okay. But we learned, though, that eventually dot, 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 but then we're going to have this on the end, right? Minus X to the 54, the other function. So when we go to simplify it before dividing by H... What's going to happen there? You know, because we have to simplify it. The ones that you can, yeah, those are going to always disappear, right? And the h you divide, all the terms are going to still have h's left in them, except for which one? This one, right? That one's going to, that one, the h is going to be gone. Like you're going to have something that says now 54x to the 53 plus whatever x to the 52 H, right? Once you divide by, they're all still going to have an H, so when you sub in the H, what's going to happen with that expression? What's going to be the only thing left? 54X to the 53. This is the only thing that's going to be left because the rest are all going to be zero when you put in H equals zero. They're all going to be zero. So for any, for anything you, uh, any, 
any power, you're going to end up with that second term. This is going to be one lower, and this is going to be the coefficient from there. Okay? Now, if you had a, if you had a number in front, if you want the derivative of x to the third, it's 3x squared. If you want the derivative of 10x to the third, think about what this 10 does to this graph. <laughs> Well, hang on. What what does this what does this 10 do to the the y values for this graph? It expands them. It's going to make the slope 10 times as big vertically. So then the derivative is going to be 10 times as big, right? 10x cubed plus 4. What does this do to the graph? It shifts it up one. If I move a graph up one, does that change the slope? No, so this is not going to change the slope. What's, but, but the other way you can, that won't change it. The other way you can look at it is, what is the slope of this? What's the derivative of that? 30x squared. What's the derivative of this? What would the derivative of that be all by itself? Zero. This doesn't contribute to, to the, remember the derivative is the rate of change? If I say to you, um, we don't want to get too, there's some function that's changing like this. As x gets bigger, it's changing. This contributes to uh, how many you have. Um, I don't know. I'm going to give you whatever x is the number, da the date of the month, and I'm going to give you 10x to the third something, candies or something like that. I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of losing it, but... I'm going to give you, no, I'm not really. I'm just, this is all hypothetical, okay? The quizzes, yes. I'm going to give you, so if, if it's the 3rd of November, I'm going to give you 10 times 3 to the 3rd. As the days go by, what's happening to the number of quizzes or candies you're getting each day? It's going way up, right? If I put a plus 4, it makes the actual number of quizzes or candies you get on a day higher, but does this contribute to the rate that it's changing? It's just four, it's four extra every day. It doesn't change the rate that it's going up at. Okay, so when you talk about the derivative, this is the derivative, this is the rate that the number is going up as you go. The, now that I've made a mess of this page here, that's what, that's what this is saying. If you have a constant multiple of a function, like if you know the derivative of x cubed, you also know the derivative of three times x cubed. If we're just using the variable u, to mean a function, if you know that, if you know u prime, you know c u, c u prime. <laughs> okay, the derivative of c times u is c u prime, c times whatever the derivative of that is. If you happen to know that the derivative of sine x is cos x, then the derivative of 5 sine x is 5 cos x. You don't know that yet. I'm just saying. Those of you that have the photographic memory might remember that when we get to that. But anyways, um, the, the, how, do we write this, how do we write this rule here? I don't always hear the comments because I'm talking at the same time, right? So... Oh, is that right? <laughs> okay, I got it. Don't mention any names, though, because otherwise, you know, can't have names on here, right? Well, I'm, I'm thinking first names is, is fine, but it actually can't. <laughs> so now I actually have to go back and edit this, so I'm going to push...